back and forth map so far. Both teams being able to take out their own map pick. All that to say, after Sharks Dust 2 did get a teensy bit close. And all is said and done, though, it is time for overpass, and it is time to see who can break the tiebreaker. Well, I guess it's break the tie, not break the tiebreaker. <laughs> Yeah, both winning their respective map picks in the series, albeit Aftershock was a much closer contested first map. Second half of Inferno certainly delivered in the clutching department, but hopefully we'll get both the best world, uh, the best of both worlds. Mixing up, mixing up all my words today. Mm -hmm. As we round into Overpass, Vertex did play out a knife round. They won it. They picked CT. Understandable decision. So Aftershock will have to show us what they can do on T side. The utility that they had for this round has already been expended, taking bathrooms control and Ruffle Co. It does play close. Well, close is where he'll end up falling down, and with that, the advantage found already for Aftershock as they're moving forward. Val had a great time on Inferno, but right now he's been shut down after just the one. Brace and Apoc both haven't come up big in their own respective rounds. They might have fit into Ooh, the idea that this yeah. could be a fake over towards a B bomb site, though, especially with Malta getting this much information over here. The boost up as well over in heaven. And now the A bomb slide is back where they'll go. Two players in heaven means that rotations can be fast as well, but not fast enough to start the plant. Great position for Attic to be able to hold, but being able to be swung from both stairs and bank simultaneously, he needs a teammate to help support. And there's a flank coming on the side of Vertex. Malta does find in frequency. They have to push forward. Addict is moving in, he's not been noticed so far, and he's going to be able to find the timing on this flank. Question is, can Ricky's keep alive or long enough and delay them as well for long enough? There's two free kills to come in his way. Ricky finishes up one as well, and that is a perfectly played situation. Yeah, great job there from Addict, just smoothly moving through the the stairs position and then flanking over towards bank, because once he deals with that player, suddenly they have a crossfire from both, lo both long and bank simultaneously, and you can see Vertex were so honed in on Ricky's position that Addict wasn't even accounted for. Aftershock, it looked like a little bit of a strange pistol. You know, they use all that utility uh, at first, and if they just progressed and, and barreled forward onto that A site, it could have been a bit of a tragedy, but like you were saying, Vertex biting down on the idea that, well, they actually didn't aggress, so they had to have gone the other direction. That wasn't the case. Good tag from the scout of PZ coming into the second. He should be able to fall back safely. Actually wants to take these duels. Another tag. So these pistols become a lot more deadly here for Vertex if they decide to pursue the A site. I've seen this story before. Oh, yeah. Question is, does it have a similar ending? Aftershock would certainly hope not. Flashbang's coming over. Well, there goes Nikki. He didn't have quite the... Uh, he didn't have quite the map in the previous one didn't really live up to expectations for me. He had a few good moments. Let's not make any mistakes about that. But even so. It started off well, it didn't finish well. Indeed. Now as they move in, Ruffleco finishes them off beautifully. A quick double with a 5-7 and they are falling apart. Aftershock's tendencies of death balling versus these half buys or four spies have come back to bite them multiple times over. Seems like I can hear some teeth chomping away in the vicinity. Apoc Quick decapitation of the last two, and that is going to be it. Yeah, same story. Even when we were talking about Aftershock versus Order, we were uh, kind of highlighting the idea that these are the rounds that they're most susceptible to, given that they're a newer squad on the block. they are certainly tr got the, the right pieces, I think, to, to make all this work. But sometimes it feels like they, they shoehorn themselves into one idea a little too easily, and so Vertex can get it actually very easy reads as a result of that you know clustering up and and having the idea that long is the only place they have to be concerned about instead of the flower pot front bathrooms without any real issue immediate overturn from vertex and i actually think overpass is a map thematically very similar to to something like inferno so i i worry to think if, if aftershock don't win out this half that vertex could very easily just swipe this series out from under them this is the safety net. This is the last chance yeah. to, to remain in contention for a slot in IEM Dallas. It's not guaranteed that he, either of these teams will make it there. They're in the lower bracket, for God's sakes. Indeed, that is true. And the upper bracket game is also going toe-to-toe -to -toe on the third map themselves. 
They have at least managed to force the CTs back, and APOC falling on long is a big one. The bomb is still quite a ways away, so at least by the time it is over and planting, the CT should be in a good position to be able to try and recover. Ricky, however, dissuades them from any such notion, and now the T's are really well positioned, actually. All comes down to what Ricky can get done in the meanwhile. Backs off, and it's infrequent to take the first shot. Tech 9 close range, but is delivering, as he always does. Quick few kills, and it's all just Brace. All alone, a one on four. Yeah, not much hope in this. Has a kit, but no smoke to even jump on that bomb, and too many angles to worry about. It's four spy wars to kick off Overpass, our final map in the series of this lower bracket. There is another rung, another matchup that is destined for either of these two teams. And a little bout of uncertainty in our decider map. Aftershock stealing it right back, and hell, I mean, if you're Vertex, force buy again? Hmm. Might be the decision. They save some extra money as a result of taking the Galils and the AKs forward. They got some floating cash. Might just be comfortable with the half buy, and will opt for such upgraded pistols, but still keeping at least 2k on each of their respective players. PZ, extra money, so they can get that AWP nice and early. The Vertex, they are bowing out to a certain degree, but mm. TT side economy is much more fickle than the other way around. The flashbang comes out, APOC. Waiting for the push to come forward. Nikki, he's going to be caught out, Bryce to bring him down. And with this, a dick comes around the side, APOC to find him and take him down. A four on three and again, they're starting things off for the advantage going the way of the forest by the one saving grace in even that only to some extent is the fact that Val is inside this B bomb site and very deep so. Malta located brought down, but Ruffle Cold could have been a spanner in the works. Yeah, the, they had no idea that Val was gonna be so progressed onto that B bomb site. This time Aftershock spreading out and, and looking for information there on the side of Vertex and realizing once they met that early aggression towards Banana. There was territory to be taken over at B. Brace does get his hands on an AK. That is certainly nice, but we won't see Vertex overturn once again. Force by Wars concluded. Only got three episodes. For now. Or two episodes, I know. guess, because Pistol doesn't really count. That's like a prequel. You know? mm. Finally. A prequel that nobody really asked for. I'll have you know. I'm looking at you, boy. People like the Pistol rounds, okay? Yeah, they do. A little bit random sometimes, or a little. Hey man, I uh, I like the USB tippity taps. I hate it when Glocks win though, which is counterintuitive, but still. Win. Yeah, that always bummed me out about the Borderlands series. Keep going forward, keep going forward, and prequel. <laughs> a little silly. Brace has the money to be able to drop out an op if he wants to. PZ, however, will be left to fend for himself. Pick up a flash. Uh, you know, dropped over to him from his teammates and a bit of utility. So he's not too dry. That's fine. Really want to see what they're made of now that they've got the appropriate weaponry. Some of that util, yeah, a little light. Not as many Molotovs as they'd like, I'm sure, to prevent some of the faster plays being an option here for Aftershock. Not exactly a tendency we've seen for them to just immediately barrel into a bomb site mm. but can be a little focused on one idea brace does find a spam kill into con i think door blown open smoke as well right through the wood they're actually not concerned about connector presence at all nick is oh if he creeps forward pz is has given up this angle. Apoc's not even looking the right way, but Nikas has no idea. Flash in, and Apoc oh. will find the kill that's needed into this 5-on-3 and be really all, all that's left. And there are so many players here from the CT side. They are very unbothered by the possibility of breach. Grenades, smokes. They've got a fair bit of utility, man. CTs don't, though, but they have the numbers. CTs do have one smoke, though, which does make a big difference. 40 seconds left, and that's when it is deployed. Aftershock 
uh, are not going to be able to actually come through monster safely. So now as a result of it, they can fully focus down over in short. Flashes won't be getting anything. Raffle Co. and Brace just rip them apart. Man, that is brutality coming out from Vertex. Yeah, and confidence in the setup that they had as well. The fact that they had the elevation onto to Grill or, or Drains just outside of Monster. Didn't move a muscle, didn't break down that setup because if they had, then maybe the that first kill comes in a little quicker. Might have been in, a, in an easier angle for those short players to, to get that entry and then focus on the next target, but get distracted by players that aren't really a, an immediate threat to that T side. The players that weren't blind, they had to worry about. But how, did, how could they know? <laughs> Attack used very early into this final map. Don't blame them for it. I feel like they, they want to use tax on low buy rounds, really. Certainly a part of their game that I think needs to undergo a bit of redefinition. Mm-hmm. Somebody got the chisel, another a hammer. Try and craft it into a masterpiece. It has not been that pretty for Aftershock. Some of the rounds where they have full gun rounds, hey, I mean, clear ideas at play, but it's pistols, they waver. Oh, oh, Apoch barely managed to keep himself alive. Flashbang over, and oh. he is spam. Grenade is not flying too much damage. Nick is, is a little bit worse for wear, but he doesn't care too much about it. Yeah, I would say. Still like, contesting, though. I would say it's a bigger deal if there were more M4s on, on Vertex. You know, the fact that he's one dink territory, I guess. But there's three AKs on the CT side, so kind he's of a three bullet point. territory. Kill from that. PZ, and yeah, he never gave up his angle over towards the bathrooms. Coming into a little bit of spam, knows that they can't beat past on a timing and, and chase him down. And very unlike Aftershock to just go all guns blazing and r chasing after players, they do have this singular player over towards B that's still investigating. Val finds an opener that could sway them over to a B-sided play. Val's been Mr. Reliable so far, but no utility whatsoever as well. He's basically hoping that the CTs walk in, and in a 5-on-3, there's no reason to... None whatsoever. 5-on-4. Sorry, 5-on-4, yes. I'm bad at counting. There are three outside of A, and they're creeping forward. 25 seconds, and less than that, in fact, to actually make Ooh. their way into the site. Nick has won the first player on the jump peak, and the flashes are good, but not realizing that a player just sat map the whole damn time. Ruffleco on that drains angle once again, and Brace not too far away. So even if Ruffleco fell, that could have been a way to trade things out, but Ricky gets two in an instant, dialing in the digits, but he cannot pull his gun out in time. Vertex had the numbers and made that rotate quick. Yeah, Ricky finding the double there is at least a little bit of damage found under the CT economy, but beyond that, there is no saving grace. None whatsoever. Uh, Vertex, I mean, bomb plan, I guess. But even then, you don't have a buy in the next round. Vertex is uh, really looking very convincing on the CT side right now. And the fact that, you know, just to go back to the start of that round, the fact that PZ even stays that long uh, posting further ahead from Divider, where his only supporting player has actually gone back to long... They're willing to split up when there are only two players on the A bomb side to continue gaining more ground. They're that confident right now in their ability to hold on, get a kill, and back off. Yeah, Aftershock haven't shown any sort of like fast con presence, which I think is what might have pulled PC away from that timing. But he's even going to go for a fast con peek himself. If there was a player that would just run at him, then he may be dissuaded. Oh, Smoke deployed a little late and peeked in front of it, but. They do find kills elsewhere. Still, the numbers game heavily in favor of Vertex. It's only suddenly Ricky that remains. He can find nothing with his Deagle. Yeah, man, I really do feel like this map is... It just fits the Vertex play style. Yes. Again, uh, Aftershock has really not shown us too much of a dynamic in terms of how they set up in the early rounds. Like, I think their mid-round reads are pretty solid. Uh, the way that they coordinate when there's... So that these three-on-three -three situations to, to set up for trades is, is always nice. But getting into a position where you have just equal numbers and, and you can make it more difficult for the CTs. Like, they're, they're going to be uncomfortable with a lack of information, especially on a map like Overpass. Getting into those situations is very difficult. 
Got to win some of these opening duels to make it a little bit more interesting. Vertex mm -hmm. makes some good counter reactions, especially on the CT side. Two players deep out of long for Vertex. Like that they change things up as well here for the CTs. Double play over at long. One playing anti flash, the other taking contact at a, at a wider angle than Aftershock. They can't run from this fight. If they go for a run boost overhead, Bryce is in the perfect position. Flashbang, overhead, will not matter. Bryce is fully ready, lines them up as well. And with Malta feeling away one of those kills, they have found the bomb on long. That is a. That's just such a good setup, and the fact that they're able to stay on it for 55 until 55 left on the clock is insane. Yeah, it's just the that's that's exactly what you want to see from from a not particularly a crossfire setup, but just being so close to one another and having one player so deep on the peak that aftershock once they lose that first player they want to trade. That that's exactly what you want to do on the T side, but that's where the player that spurts up from from that rock and tree position. Really comes back to just hone in on, on that fight and make sure that his teammate doesn't go down for free or, or even go down at all. Well, spot you play by yourself. Bring a friend. Yeah. Love seeing that well, made. Always yeah, reminds me while. of UKCS, in fact player that used to do that all the time. I think it was, I want to say it was Dancy's. Probably, probably wrong on that front memory of a goldfish, but it's always a style and need to throw the CT. I would expect it from a guy called Dancy's in all fairness. Was it Astro? Anyway, doesn't matter. Somebody from the old Wind and Rain lineup, once upon a time. He's just comfortable, man. He is feeling it. He, he might just be 4-4 four and four only, but that is not really reflecting his form right now. He's jumping about, taking peeks. Doesn't matter if there's a deacon on the other side. It's very punishable, but punishable only matters if they actually punish you, you know? Yeah, had, had a pretty rough series, I think, against LFO, who are a team that I think many will throw in their rep and say, yeah, they are a team that can punish you for some of these kind of overface, over peaks. Felt like that, PZ as well, just hit the wall bang on infrequent and he was not happy about it. I just can't get anything going on around like this. Ricky does find a headshot, but tanks a nade for his troubles and PZ will finish off business. Three kills on IDWP, it is against pistols, but so critical that Vertex can win some of these rounds cleanly. We started off with a little force by war, it was cute. Now Aftershock's having some troubles uh, accomplishing their initial goals on this T side. I can do a full investment, see if they can maintain numbers. Hell, even get a man advantage. That would go a long way. Feels like they're always working from deficits. And they want to take a, take a bomb site. This Molly actually stops Val from getting easy access. to run around the flames. to stop them getting short pressure but uh, instead it's it could be short guys <laughs> air con it's really interesting to see how free pz feels to be this aggressive when he is effectively the solo a side player like they could have crept up con already yeah it could be halfway uh, through the bathrooms as well. Like, the only support he can possibly have is if Apoc throws a flashbang over behind him or something. But Aftershock haven't pushed themselves or, like, yeah. limit-tested, I suppose, the, some of these CT setups. So, yeah, PZ can feel a little bit more comfortable because they haven't been that aggressive. You know it's getting difficult when the CTs are the ones limit-testing the T-side setups. Mm-hmm. Bit of an earlier re smoke coming out, but I don't blame them. With 35 seconds left, that is a great timing to be deploying one. Are there any incendiaries present over here? Doesn't look like it. Not quite. 
20 seconds, calls being made, flashbang over, Raffle Coat unable to find the kill on Valor, somehow got two on the exit out, but Brace is just impeccable. Will be swinging out for the fourth, but unable to connect. Instead, oh. PZ was called to action and no Oh no, found. they can't plant. Oh my god, not like this, not like this. Barely having the time. I think they've got it down just at the nick of it, but no. A millisecond, that's all it takes. Oh, I thought Attic made the right read as well. You know, getting that kill on, on the player's spawn that's holding the bomb and holding the cross from short into the bomb site. That was the critical one. He gets his hands on that bomb and then he drops into water. He drops into pit. And as soon as he does that, he just doesn't have the, the freedom, the space to, to get the, the digits uh, dialed in. Didn't feel comfortable just committing to the plant out into the open because even if the time wasn't against you, heaven was fully open. That round sucks. Mm. Collins must have been clustered. Chaos in late round moments. They get every kill they need to, but still can't tie the bow on top. Maybe I'm jumping the gun. Maybe I'm pulling too much away from some of those previous maps. But if I think... If we learn anything from those previous series, I think if Vertex get up to 10 rounds, I'm not sure Aftershock will have the wiggle room necessary pull it back on CT. They are certainly a good CT team. I think they need that sort of 9-6 scoreline to feel a little bit more at ease. Not comfortable, the thing is, but at ease. Uh, I think that this might actually end up being like an 11-4. Because even that round, the fact that they have a chance in it is predicated off of Val getting that beautiful double kill. And on the entry, coming into two players on different angles yeah. through Monster. And it, it was you know? a very risky play. Like, they go in after a fresh smoke is deployed at 20 seconds yes. and the flash just eaten by the, the player that's close Monster. Mm. It doesn't look like you know, these are replicable situations. And look, man, Val's been great so far, I have to say. But nothing whatsoever being found right now. Even over here, the boost up seems a little bit... a little bit desperate. Malta and Rawful just moving up right underneath the crosshair of Ricky. Oh, if they jump drains. Oh, went on a different angle. Mm -hmm. Played some, some of the deeper fights. If Rawful goes a little further to the left, would have been exposed to that boost, but Aftershock broke it down anyway. Now there's 30 seconds again. That's when the smoke goes down. He's got to start pushing through. Ricky's been good with the Deagle, so he's good for the first. But now all about Rafuko. Drops the bomb, makes it three, and keeps it going for more oh, and more. There you have it. There's four. Yeah, really nice stuff there from Rafuko. Just spamming a cursory burst through Monster and finding a secondary kill, but then also resetting on the players, progressing off of short. Bit of a Hail Mary round if Aftershock was somehow able to breach into that site and get their hands on weaponry, but not to be, not when Rafalco is there. A much better performance than I, and a much better start to this game than I than we saw in, in map number two. Really pulled his socks up when it came to the CT side, but started rough not to be here in the decider. The peak. Molly as well, right in front of PZ. He could even push further than that, should he so choose. Val's not watching for it. He's the only player over on the B side of the map. Oh man, he might just call an all clear. That's fake info. Val up short, finds his kill. Apoch and Brace are looking to maybe even aggressive ahead. Now, this time, PZ, of course, not over towards the A-bomb site, so they're prioritizing just holding on to the divider banana area. Not really putting any focus out on long, but good for them. There's no one on long for the T-side either. And as they start to push in, Brace does have a flashbang. If he wants to chuck this one out for Apoch to take the peek, it'll be a little bit of a risky one. No way to get a perfect flash out for that angle, I believe, from the position that Brace is in right now. Apoch, however, just speaks a drive. Taken down. Let's fight for Brace. First kill's there, but Ricky, the trade. So good on some of these opening kills is Ricky, but Rafalco now nestled into a one-and-done position. Has to pull it all up. Found four kills in the round prior, and they line up! Rafalco, it's three in an instant, and gets his hands on that AWP. He's 10. 
One single bullet from Val will be enough to seal the round in, and 30 seconds left on that clock. A small gap around the smoke as well. Flash, great, and oh. Val will hit the shot needed. No heroics this time over. I don't know, man. Val looked pretty damn heroic right there. <laughs> No heroic from Rafaqo at the very least, but what a play coming out from him just nestling away in... Michael, you call it. It's a one and done normally, but he gets one, goes for two more, lines him up on the spray, and Aftershock again, Michael. It's just one of those positions where you start to think back to Inferno. Hey, man, maybe not be pulling your knife out and jumping onto the bomb site when to sight lines and whatnot. Sure, you're not expecting them to be there that early, but even so... Yeah, they thought they got the quick rotate. You know, they, they pick a player off stairs, and I think it's all clear. And that small drop in the guard almost made things interesting. PZ gets his kill on the peak towards Fountain. Addict cannot chase in con. Play around the corner as well. would have to clear every nook and cranny. And he doesn't. Once that molly fades, just gets shot in the back. I'll scripting through. Has to deal up with the booster player on the toxic barrels. And the MP9 backs off. Ruffle. He's having a game. Right now, keep the spray going. Actually ducking back into Ricky's pattern. He was going to end up losing his own head for it. But even then, it's a 4 and 2. He is, generally speaking, quite happy with the situation. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, I'm starting to believe more and more in this 11-4. Oh man, hats off to Val for some of the clutches he's pulled through in this series, but Vertex is finding themselves in so many advantages on the CT side. Always Aftershock looking for some sort of a way out. They've got the spoon, they have to start digging through the dirt. Make a tunnel, some sort of an escape from the prison of their own making. Are there even spoons? Are they sporks in prison? <laughs> I wouldn't know, Michael. Fortunately. <laughs> I can imagine they allow many sharp objects. Did you say unfortunately or fortunately? I said fortunately. Yeah, okay. I was going to say... No, 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 no. I would rather not find yeah, that. Yeah, you know? I, I, ignorance is bliss. Indeed. Indeed. After shock are on their potential last buy of the half. If they lose this round now, they will have a half buy slash four spy going into the next one. Very crucial round for them to win this time over. And that's without any incendiaries, molotovs, nothing of the sort. Only three flashes for them as well. You're relying on some raw aim. And Val's been given a Galil instead of an AK. I cannot get behind that decision. <laughs> Oh man, he's been a fragging machine. Who needs an AK? Maybe him. Maybe him, actually. Yeah, people yeah. who've been fragging machines. Yeah, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe him. Mm. Ricky has been delivering some good entries, some good trade kills as well. Very snappy. One of the most experienced of the Asia, uh, Asia region? Australian region. Oh. Apox hoping to be able to get a quick shot over here, and with a flashbang, he knows they're in close by. They creep in, Apox gets it for free. With the early advantage found, you've lost all the utility you had, except for smokes, and need I tell you, smokes aren't going to do Mike's all as too. much as you think. Yeah. That's Bryce coming in from the back lines. It should be a quickie on the infrequent. He's got no chance over here. Apox got and found another one in the meanwhile. Infrequent, well... He's going to be able to find one, maybe? No, not even sculpted into the angle over here. Brace has found Val, and that distracts him frequent for long enough. Now, a two-on-five flashbang out from APOC. He's going to take the peak, lose the duel. Ricky, however, is traded out courtesy of a grenade, and Brace will finish off infrequent. There you have it, 10-4, to four, now a half by is your only hope. Yeah, I thought that was going to get a little hairy. They start rotating on the side of Vertex because Brace is flanking through Fountain. He doesn't see anybody in bathrooms. He doesn't see anybody setting up for smokes or utility on the bench just outside of toilets. And once he realizes that, starts making his way through Con. You know, we start to see Vertex ease up on the A-side hold. But even with all of that, he's still able to get a kill on the short order player. 
Able to get kills on the bomb site. Urtex. No sweat off there, bro. Aftershock have it all to do. Embrace just inside of the connector. And Frequent trying to jump past the smoke. And Ricky doesn't feel comfortable chasing the trade. Oh, PC should have this one for free. Yeah, Mickey's gone. Bryce is even looking to re peek in. Just oh, constant no. deficits. Constant deficits. That deficit is just going to be extended. Not quite actually. Addict is left with one HP. Not sure how he manages to get away with that one, but even so, uh, it's not exactly something to write home about. I'm uh, I got into a fight and I almost died. <laughs> But I want it. Sincerely, child. I'm okay now, though. Well, not yet. He is not okay yet. Apox found another one and dropped the bomb in the process of doing so. Oh 45 seconds. The Molotov's taken down a dick. That's just uh, lighting up a match and he's gone. <laughs> yeah, just didn't have the HP to run through the flames and even just the, the setting of the Molotov yeah. is enough to take him out. Rookie, 26 HP, four players to find. No chance, no shot. Malta even spots him. 25 seconds is all that remains. Feeling like 11-4, you called it. Well, 15 seconds and Raffle from behind will be able to finish it off. That being said, second half's their only hope. What does it hold? We'll find out after a short break. Back into things, a dire situation for Aftershock, and one that would be made significantly worse if they're not able to take this pistol right away. Yeah, I think it's fair to say it's an absolute necessity. The bear necessities, you might even say. Clustered up onto that B-side, our Aftershock, and this is the right direction. Vertex, full execute on the bomb site, but look how clustered they are. Oh, great flashbang as well. Nicky's well blind, so good for one. And Val is oh. getting more done. He is just always the hero for Aftershock. He's been behind a couple of the rounds that they have actually been able to salvage. And now uh, we'll continue to plank away. All down to PZ. I'm just kind of dropped in the middle of the site, man. Nobody's watching for short. The timing. Oh, they do. They do. They do quickly peek out right now, so PZ's position has been given up for free, and now just pushing and making sure he hasn't rotated back towards Monster and being very, very careful about not giving up free kills. Don't blame them for that one. Yeah, it doesn't have armor, so it has to be nice and crisp here from PZ. That's a minimum. Yeah, too many angles to deal with, too low, no chance over there. Aftershock will be able to find themselves the pistol. Now the question is, can they follow up? We've seen some struggles against these force players. Yeah, that's been kind of the story for the past couple of maps. Aftershock struggling against uh, weaponry they know they shouldn't have issues with. I think it's always the, the hardest thing to help refine as well in, in newer squads. Takes the, the most amount of reps. You have to, I think, toy with a lot of different setups. Sometimes people are uncomfortable with just constantly taking long-range fights. You want to have a, a small bits of aggression in some squads. I'm not facilitating all of that. Make sure everyone's uh, in the best form possible. But Vertex don't commit to the force buy. They have a lead. They'll have a buy in the next round. Just Glocks. They got a P250 in Rafiko's hands, but... I'll make quick work of the long position and frequent can spot them at a distance and just catches a glimpse of one but doesn't realize that the whole train's coming. Right, flashbang over here and frequent. Yeah, that train is uh, derailed, Michael. It's been 
looted it's been raided it reminds me of the old wild west movies where you see horses running by a train and hijacking the train mm. which i always found very confusing because even if you hijack a train where is it gonna go it's just a bloody train track also is the horse Dude. fast enough to actually back like, in the old days you yeah know? i guess once upon a time yeah try and do that with the uh, hypersonic rails we have nowadays i mean or the maglevs oh my god horse i mean maybe with that <laughs> Maybe if the horse is in front of it, you know, he makes it stop. <laughs> that's, that's not okay. <laughs> Indeed it is. But now, question is what can make these wolves stop? Vertex are howling away. Howling their way through this match so far. Very defensive setups here from Aftershock. Contained inside of the A-bomb site, just setting up over a long Malta oh, getting God. spammed to high <laughs> hell. MP9. <laughs> that wall is paper thin. Well, I guess wooden thin. <laughs> Paper's made of wood, I guess. Yep. Specific trees, to be fair, but... More sheets. He'd much prefer a piece of sheet metal on that angle if he could, but he's not the map designer. He has no control over that. Also, a bit of a struggle, even on some of these lurking positions, but should see activation. Oh. More so on the T side, and Frequent taking a dink while jumping up around the dice does actually fall back past the smoke, so it does concede the site. Oh, Sprays decent. does some good damage on the A-Bock, but it's a dick to actually misses out big time. Bomb's gonna be planted as a result of it, and Frequent cannot push through. He himself was dinked up earlier on, like you mentioned, Michael, and these MP9s is gonna need to get busy. Four flashes for the T side, all of them starting to rain through. Nicely positioned as well, just to keep the second player at bay. Infrequent gets one traded out very soon, though, and it's easy to push forward. Infrequent takes him down. It's all down to Ruffle and Brace. Can they find more? Yes, they can. Brace all alone. A one on one and an AK to give him the advantage. The time works out for him. He knows Ricky's right next to him. And Brace, well, that's just a round. Taken back by him, even finding the kill at the very end. He'll die with the bomb, but another round added to the tally here for Vertex. That looked pretty good for, for Aftershock. The timing on the retake utility was sound. You know, the, the smoke over at the, the steps, accompanied by the, the Molotov onto the truck. That smoke is fading just as the Molotov hits, so he catches that. They, they catch the player in transition. They get the numbers advantage for just a moment, but then just being able to bounce between those two players. One front bathroom is the other in the site. Vertex just had a couple of these angles to divert the attentions of Aftershock. This nade rammed into the, the behind of one of the follow-up players there for Vertex, but no real consequence of that. Nobody on the receiving end. Nick is, does find a kill to start and kick things off. Drop to 6 HP and Val playing very close to the smokes over at the entrance at B. They have to know that there's someone possibly up close early oh well knowledge is uh some sort of power yeah they knew but not uh, very much yeah can you actually do anything about it malta has been having a surprisingly dry game so far actually i just noticed these five and twelve these past two rounds having been found as the first pick is not helping them out at all yeah i should i mean should see better activation when we see like more defaulty looking rounds from vertex was uh, an absolute fiend and a nuisance on inferno we saw how many times he got he was in the apartments, just applying that pressure it was a part of some of the fakes and wrapping plays that Vertex had planned. Well, on Dust 2, that was the case as well. Yeah, some struggles on the CT side, that's for sure. And frequent. Oh, good time to drop down. He will be able to maintain that advantage, and the gender being spreading uh, closer means that Rafa can't really jump through it either. Miss Molotov, I don't think that's going to have any impact on things, but it does look like the T-side should generally be settling down with maybe just a bomb plant and a kill or two. Ruffle Co leads the charge on the ladder, and as he jumps into the toilet, Dick will be more than happy to flush him out of it. Easy in back and hearing steps. Two sets, I think. Oh, close range, they push through. First kill found, but PZ is busy trying to spam into the smoke. Hey man, if one can come, two can as well. Wonder if that was a read on how Ricky would likely play out that situation or not. Ricky very defensive in some of the, the ways that he's pursued through smokes. 
I think more comfortable to see it fade, but had the numbers advantage, had a date. Uh, you have me doing it now as well. Had addict yeah. <laughs> moving up from bathrooms at, at the same time, so trying to make use of that timing. Keeps a level head, Ricky. I just always like feel like saying addicted instead of addict, mm. so it just defaults to addict instead. Let's see that pronunciation, uh, pronunciation in the a dictionary. <laughs> you could have said in a dictionary instead of in the a dictionary. But yeah, okay, I know, I but I just wanted to emphasize that I was making a pun. <laughs> so what? Sue me. If only. That's a very American saying, because other places would just be like, yeah, just yeah. I'd rather not end up in a legal battle, in fact. I feel like there's a lawsuit for everything in the States. There already is. Precedent is weird that way. Case law, you know, when you consider that case law goes back like 500 years, there really is. It's it's some of that's real antiquated. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, I, I think the contracts law that most people still use is like from 1879, like the baseline contracts law, something like that at least. Like obviously there's alterations and yada, 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 mm. but yeah. This is where you lose me, but... I'm on my head. Audibly. 40 seconds and these tech nines have got a boogie in soon because this disco is about to close down. It's trying to burst. Got one flash. Better be used well. And as they start to move through, Apex got the first and Nicky's and Ricky's have come through and got all the clickies. Big and span is the plan there for Aftershock. Hey man, bringing things closer and closer. Vertex might have felt a little comfortable coming into this second half. New Aftershock CT side was gonna, I think, look better than some of the looks that they found on T. They were very infrequently getting the opening picks. Constantly working and bailing themselves out of deficits, if at all. Let's not forget Dust too, man. That's a similar story to yeah. this one. Of course, book's not quite so deep in. Never know when there could be some twists and turns. And this is the timing on Malta addicts trying to backstab them, and they weren't really looking for con pressure. Door blown open. That's one of the angles you're exposed to. Keep that in your mind, especially if you don't have much of a con presence yourself. Rafiko was there, but didn't see the push coming. Not exposed. No presence over towards Banana from Aftershock, which is something that Vertex was prioritizing very heavily in their own defense. Meanwhile, Infrequent's just going to continue jump swatting up above on the A bomb side dice as well. Sacronite should do nothing, right? Okay, barely anything. At least brings him down into one day territory, but now the question is. With 45 seconds left, the ball's being made. Malta's found oh. two massive frags. That has completely opened things up. But Infrequent and Val will still hold on. They maintain advantage and 35 seconds on the clock means the T side has to act and fast. No utility to try and flush them through and Val looks away right at the nick of time. Two on two. They don't have a kit. They don't have smokes. No Molotovs as well. So it's as difficult as it could be to pursue this. One con, one making its way out through CT, and Infrequent's gonna be the one that forefronts the action. Going, Infrequent caught out, Brace and Waffle just shut them down. The CTs will not be allowed their 1v1s, and Malta. I mentioned he'd been a bit quiet, maybe that's why he's been quiet all game long, Mark, because he can be extra sneaky beaky oh, when he be. The tack to follow that up as well, that's a massive blunder there from Aftershock. That's an angle that you can clear without fully swinging to it as well. There's a pallet as a part of the sandbags over at short, and there's a gap in those pallets that lets you see players round the corner without fully peeking it. All they have to do is consider that as an option for the, for the tees. But I guess Malta just slipping the net. And, and I think maybe that is even predicated off the fact that, you know, we had that, that early con pressure from Aftershock. They get a backstab on a player trying to make its way or make their way up short. Maybe they think, they think it's all clear as a result of getting that kill. 
what enables Malta to, to find this backstab. That's the that's the way that I'm wrapping my head around it because it, it is such an easy eye to dot. Still not considered. And yeah, Malta gets all the impact necessary and cracks that round wide open. A lot of connector presence, Aftershock. It's brave of them to actually go for the eco here. I, I have to say, because you've got 1,900 loss bonus, so you will be able to buy up in the next round. It's going to be a bit questionable, but let's see whether or not maybe, maybe this can be one of those miracles that we have seen. USP gets diddly squat. Mm-hmm. Attic. Well... This Malta is going to be the closer towards the tail end of things. Just pinning up wherever he can, and yeah, this is just a quick one. Vertex up to 40. Feels like something has to change. So many defensive holds, so many passive setups. That's been the real game plan here for Aftershock on the CT side, and it's been working in terms of you know, setting up for some of these retakes, get, getting, I think, a bit more aggro in the late round scenarios where, especially if they are able to deal with Malta, they can sleep a little safer on those rotations. Because there's not likely to be an extra player on the backstab. But when they're losing out in these opening fights and when they're also in these positions that, yeah, they could have cleared an angle. I can really fester, really stew if something... Not so pleasant. It's something that I've noted. I think we've talked to a couple of in-game leaders that have used tactical timeouts as a way to let something fester. There is a big mistake. Let it linger in your opponent's mind for that extra second. Let them fight it out amongst themselves. Yeah. Yeah. When they're just looking to go, go, go into the next round and forget their mistakes. It's hard to contain all these thoughts. Hmm. PC though, hard to contain all these shots from Val. And first one comes out for free, Malta recovers that AWP. He is hoping for any mistake to be made from the CT side, none to be had. Mr. Double Trouble, last few rounds. Got a 3k in the last, but that's only pistols, so whatever. Again, multi-kills is the big deal. We're going to find someone peeking on this AWP, and Nikes does take up the angle, but on the Malta couldn't flick too fast enough. Three on five. I said uh, Aftershock are able to deal with both the players that wielded that AWP. Especially with them not having the most amount of utility. You know, they don't have options to throw smokes into the late round, throw Molotovs as well to deter Vertex from pursuing one of the sites or the other. Why not limit their numbers instead? The bomb is not moving from outside of Monster. Yeah. Um, it really does look like they're more just focused on, hey, let's just, if we can get some kills, yeah. maybe that baits out the bomb plant and we'll prioritize investing with their economy more. Like if they get these two kills over at A, you best believe these three players get, are going to rotate, but nobody peeking across my bathrooms and APOC spotted with the bomb. So that's all the info they need. 13 seconds, man. They need to make a move of things because they cannot afford to not get lost bonus. Actually, no, they've got $1,400 only. So they can actually very much afford to... Hell, they might even prefer it at this point. Yeah, not a premium buy. Yeah. That's for sure that they'll be shortchanged in a couple of aspects, but they can get four rifles out of this. That'd be a little thrown in there. Did they opt for the AWP? Why the... did Brace go for no head armor? I just saw that. Like, in the previous round. That's carried over. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a little short yeah. change, perhaps. Yeah, 3k, Michael. A little short change. <laughs> on the, to be fair, short change on the round where they were up against pistols. They just maybe bought the AK and was like, oh, I don't have enough for head armor. Sometimes it's the order of buying things that sometimes comes back to bite you. You don't want no head armor against pistols either, to be honest, but... You don't want no head armor against anything on the CT side. Mm -hmm. Well, they aren't actually buying into this one, so they will stick to 
the remaining guns and try and save in this one. Maybe a bomb plant would be nice. Some executes are at least planned out with the utility they have bought up. And then through the highest fraggers here on Vertex with the remaining AKs, so why not? Do what they can do. Well, Marple's gone for now. That's a boost up for Infrequent, taking a quick beat down under. And it is Raffle Co. to find Val just Dumping straightly around. running forward to get a sightline on Monster. Yeah, no smoke there. Was somebody supposed yeah. to throw one? Well, Molotovs don't killed? obscure that much vision, guys. Felt like that was somebody's job and they didn't do it. Or just a massive misstep. Val's been pretty good. Like He's been one of the saving graces. We've noted it a few times this series. And now no longer a part of the equation. All these two rifles in hand, the single set of utility in PZ's possession. And the Orb of Addict could get overwhelmed. Especially with the flashbangs that are present. Yeah. Well, P comes out. The flashbangs are late. His owner could, and Addict is not blind at all. He's got 20-20 vision, baby. And now, finally caught out on the side. The no-scope missing out, and Ruffle goes to keep it going. Looks for more. It's PZ to go forward, pick up the AWP as well. A one-on-one -on -one now. Player oh. going out over to Divider. He had the right call as well, but unfortunately not anticipating the speed of Ricky. Also, the fact that that bomb is dropped on top of the, the dice there made it that extra bit more awkward you know they saw them jump up on the side of vertex to try and retrieve it and wasn't quite close enough to the edge to be able to just swipe that up i think pz quite realized the the position he was in he sort of ran over the the spot and i think he hoped he just grabbed the bomb as well like you said just too quick on the rotate it was so close but up to double digits are aftershock and they are still in a position where they can close this one out they're running out of room, though. Oh. This wasn't spotted. Not good response. Good damage. All of them just reload. He's going to be caught up by Addict. Not even needed. Val as well comes out with the first one. Addict now goes back up connector. And with three players on B, they are very secure in their defense. Now oh, then, even that last round, you consider the fact that Addict isn't really a primary AWPer. Like, he looked, he looked damn good. Now finding an initiative push as well with his player baiting a uh, uh, brace in with the spam. Another one of these three on fives to navigate out of on a full buy round two. Oh, great Perfect. flashbang as well. Yeah, this is gone. I like the multi got a kill weird. while full blind is a little yeah. bit strange, but... Um, like, this is also where we have to consider the idea that uh, Vertex, man, if it wasn't an 11-4, if it was honestly if it was just a 10-5, I feel like Aftershock would be in such a good position to even just run away with this yeah. one. Yeah. Vertex's T-Sign has looked highly uninspired. Rolling into some of the same pitfalls, you know, losing these these opening fights, I think some of the saving graces has come from, you know, Malta being able to get some of these multi-kills. Sometimes in positions Love. where he shouldn't. Now upgraded pistols here for Vertex to deter a 12th, but I don't think that's really going to change too much. Aftershock, with the, the way that they've been playing a bit more forward as of late... That's really allowed them to continue to get these opening kills. But they play a little bit more safe. I think recognizing what the money's looking like from the T's attic doesn't get cleared. And so it's an easy double multa as well, trying to trade things out. And so the bomb dropped and exposed. Val as well will take position, make sure that those bathrooms cannot be pursued. Ooh. Kill for PZ might just be a consolation because after shock have... Swarm. They know they're spreading out, making sure that he cannot fall back with that weapon. Nicely done. No chance. None whatsoever. Aftershock are getting into dangerous territory. One more gun round is all it'll take for them to be able to close the gap and equalize on 14, potentially. And Vertex. feel like they could use one of those timeouts right now, Michael. 
interestingly enough, we haven't actually seen that much presence over towards Divider and A in general. Uh, I don't. I. I could. I can. I can almost swear we haven't seen any uh, long pushes from the T side early in, especially. No. Not from Vertex's T side, I think. Yeah. From yeah. From Vertex. I mean. Aftershock as well always went for later timings. Like they didn't just thunderfoot and and chase players down. Didn't go for yeah. But again, this is sort of limit testing uh, discussion we were having earlier on about making it so that Aftershock have to, or rather the CT side in general, just has to honor certain timings. And a lot more conservatively on the A bomb side because of a B sided stack are CTs in this round. You see how much it, it goes the distance just by changing setups on CT as well. They've had Addict and Connector. They've been, been shifting where their assets are located. Vertex have to take a cautious step. They've been caught out a couple of times by these more forward positions. Oh, push through Monster Tunnel. There's going to be information gathered here for after for Aftershock. Going to limit some of the options here for Vertex as they look to reinforce that A site where everyone's setting up for utility on T. There's smoke flash over at B, and it's pulling Aftershock further back, but not far enough that they're convinced it's going to be a B-sided play. Got to make the move now. At least I haven't lost members so far. That's one saving grace, you know, there's... Not for the most frequent of things. Infrequent and Ricky, however, will be able to rectify that. Late or early, they're going to lose the openers. Malta, however, will at least respond with a few. But Ruffle Co. is going to be getting absolutely nothing. Hell, he might have just put them in a position where they... God, they might even have to force by this next one. Actually. I am very not... I am very unsure about what call you make on how to buy around this. Yeah, because if you buy around this, you know, you save, he saved about the same amount of weaponry and the same amount of money that his teammates just got as a result of the loss bonus. Mm. But then you also, you're putting yourself in a position where you just don't have an ideal buy. Yeah. Yeah, they'll half and Rufflecoe will have to bite the bullet when they do commit back into weaponry. Really awkward scenario. Rufflecoe up to 30 kills. Strange to see him the one lurking. With so much ground gained early on towards long, this is a very different look from Vertex at the very least. We talked about that earlier, Michael. They might actually be able to find infrequent on the retreat. Question is, what's Ricky keeping an eye out for? Well, that's exactly what he's keeping an eye out for. And sure, the AK has been recovered, and Bryce is going to be looking to push out from behind. A great flashbang, but Ricky's backed off, and infrequent and addict are both in a great position to stop anyone from proceeding through. Yeah, this round, it is gone, 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 unless they're going to come through with a big eagle round. No, not quite. Not yet. I think PZ was a little surprised. He got as far as he did as well. Turned around and there's a player staring into his soul. A tying round for Aftershock and a chance to overtake. Also offered up. We talked about Rofiko having to bite the bullet. He goes down to a Galil just so he can afford up some extra utility as well. That momentum shifting in much the same way. You make that callback to Dust2. Aftershock were trailing. And then they pulled it back and snuck it right past them. And it came down to the final few rounds. Vertex feels like the wind's out of their sails once again. Oh, they're pushing, they're pushing. This might have been the big mistake. They've given up the early advantages. Malta has brought it in. Their favor, the CTs, it was all working for them. Now they're getting fancy and their footwork short. Sure. It's Ricky to get... At least one in response, but they have very much lost out the advantage. You're gonna just have to trust Ricky with this B bomb site. You can see infrequent trying to take control over the bathrooms, but even still pushing much further with that with with an AWP. So so difficult. Very likely to fall into a trade trap from the T's. The addict making his way over as well, reinforcing this B bomb site. 
They're just going to burst. Try and use the numbers. Has to be the plan here for Vertex. They've got a lot of utility, but try and just work the numbers game. Oh, Ricky's position is perfect. He's good for two, almost three. Now the AWP of a dick has to come through. Shines in, drops the bomb. A one on one. The lack of flashes used is going to be coming back to bite them, but PZ is rearing his own chompers. Got full utility for this one on one. The grenade oh. comes through and infrequent dodge it. Down at 11 HP. SP250 won't be enough even if he gets a headshot. Needs the AWP kill. Flash is going by, not doing anything inside the smoke. PZ up on top and hit 15, baby. Sure. Comes in in the most impossible circumstances where it seems like you've won the round. Ricky responds, uh, hey, 15 is 15. And Lightning doesn't strike twice. Not on the same series. Aftershock. Could have just very well taken themselves to 15 instead. But yeah, they, they go for a push through the monster tunnel. And I don't think they've... Suffered in converting rounds where Malta has found a multi-kill. Gets another one of these doubles. And considering the fact that, you know, Vertex, they've been trying to get players uh, uh, set up in short so they can make sure that they can clear out connector and they don't have to worry about these double pushes. The nade constantly being thrown out to open up the connector door. It's been a difficult one for them to crack. For Malta to have the presence of mind that they were going to get aggro outside of Monster is... Great work. I think the lack of smoke was really what threw him off. Lack of utility being thrown there early on. Yeah. Big forward, Malta's almost taken down this time. Grenade should be able to do the trick. No, goes uh, goes back into short water to run away from it. Yeah, and it's... Oh, what? The kill, big, big miss, big, big, big miss. Addict is unhappy about this circumstance, but at least they're able to find Malta over here. Brace is just ducking away. He is looking to be that late execution. The missed shot from Nicky's. It's all down to Val. He's been very good, but how long can this one man stay good for? A Molotov to force him back, but not before he's found the kill. Ricky comes through with another one. PZ all alone, a one on three. The hype behind this man's shoulders were real, but can he carry the responsibility along with it? Bomb on his back. Yes, absolutely. Utility, only a grenade. Now smoke picked up as well. Bomb faked out. Sees Ricky going for the swing. 15 seconds. Ricky's come close. The grenade as well to move forward with. Gets the first shot. Ricky's on his side. Ricky's oh. gone as well. PZ has done it. 16th found. And Michael Lightning might not strike twice, but this man is wielding it. Another round where it looked like they had fudged it. I can't believe he's able to pull that one out. I mean, they make the right call. They double up. Uh